good looking guy out of the way, it's time for the guy who has too many movies for me today. <laughs> yes. Hi. Yes, good. I've got that shirt. I love that shirt. I was going to wear it today and I thought, oh, I better not. I, uh, I was one of the co writers for this film. Uh, also, I have two other movies premiering today. Scooby Doo Return to Zombie Island and Lego Batman Family Matters. So, uh, so very excited. So, how did those movies help you kind of like, you know, uh, help you with this writing, being a writer for this? So, this one was um, uh, Mim Macau, this, this wonderful producer on the show, uh, Sandy, uh, brought me in. She had worked with me on all the Lego uh, movies. Um, and I've been doing a lot of stuff at Warner, and they wanted me to come in and help out Marley and Jeff with the script. And, uh, and I, uh, all those movies, if you watch them, um, I have a penchant for big action and silly silliness, and uh, that just kind of helped out. I, you know, the great thing about animation is this incredibly collaborative exercise where there's artists at every level just kind of adding to it, and you have to be kind of egoless in that sense because um, the story of a guy will oftentimes come up with a better joke, and you're like, oh, damn it, you know, I should have figured that out. Or, you know, the, the voice actor will suddenly say it in a way that you're like, oh, that's much better. And the, the glory is, as a writer, you can kind of take some of that credit, but the reality is, you know, they're like genius level, you know, craftsmen at every level. And my job is just, uh, I think one of my talents lies, uh, I never knew this word, my wife taught it to me, it's called ideation. I have a lot of ideas, and I drink a lot of Red Bull, and so I just come in as like an idea factory and like, how can I help you? How can I help you? Okay, not that, what about this? Okay, not that, what about this? Open another Red Bull. Okay, what about that, you know? And Jeff, who you met, um, he, you know, he's particular and he has a vision and, um, you know, he's kind of a certifiable genius. And the thing is, you know, like I said, watch this space. He's the type of guy that at some point the studio is going to figure out, we're going to give him a big movie and we're going to give him four years to do it and you're going to see something remarkable because he is, um, I've never worked with somebody that, that just just cares so much and like deeply invested in what's going on and wants to make it perfect, like just absolutely wants to make it perfect. And, um, you know, I learned a lot working for him. It was, a, it was a ball, you know, and I just wanted to keep feeding him, feeding the idea monster like, well, what about this, what about this, what about this? So I think that was my function, and hopefully I helped, you know. So were there any like difficulties or challenges that came up along the way of helping yeah. bring the story to life? Well, uh, with any, with making anything, this is the thing. Before I got into the entertainment business, I, you know, I was just a supreme fanboy that would get angry at everything, uh, and like, why didn't they do this or why didn't they do this? And now that I'm the other side, I'm like, oh, it's remarkable you make anything because there's so many gatekeepers and there's so many um, like hurdles you have to jump through in order to get anything. Notes from executive, notes that, oh no, we, that actor's gone, we have to do this now, and you have to switch and move. So when you see anything good, it's remarkable. Um, for me, the idea thing is I, I do feel like I have um, uh, unlimited glut of ideas, but somebody described it as, you're, it's almost like you're doing math. And I'm not good at that. So, you know, after you're done talking story or talking ideas, there's an exhaustion that takes over. Like after this, I'm just gonna be like, oh, just kill me, you know? Um, but uh, that was the struggle, is to keep up the energy, keep up the enthusiasm for something that you're doing, and keep willing to dig down and come up with more ideas and more ideas. So you're like, I give you 50. Where's that, you know, and they went, but we want 51. And you're like, okay, you know, so. Uh, that's, that was a challenge. Do you think the fans who have been yeah. Just doing YouTube video after yeah. YouTube video about Teen Titans Go and why it's bad, and now that they're finally get to see a new Teen Titans story, do you think they'll finally be satisfied? No. Still gonna be no one's ever going to be satisfied. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. I I am that guy. You know, like I love Teen Titans. Yeah. And when it ended, I was like, who do I have to kill? And then I and there are people like. I work with, <laughs> so uh, I was like, I was irritated by it, you know. And then you see two guys going, you're like, ah, oh, stupid. And then you're like, oh, it's its own thing. It doesn't diminish what was. It's just its own thing. 
Yeah, and uh, it's the same way uh, with with anything. You, it doesn't it doesn't make it disappear. And if we've known anything, this is, this is the the thing that I hope everybody understands. It doesn't take away from it. It's just a different thing. And that doesn't mean that's not going to exist in the future because. If you watch anything, I guarantee you, if everybody goes and watches Teen Titans on the DC Universe app at the level they're watching Young Justice, suddenly there's going to be a conversation somewhere about, well, can they both exist? You know, in the same time. You know what I mean? So I, you know, there is that kind of like, uh, you know, money talks a little bit, you know, at a higher level. But as a fan, I don't, th I don't think this is the last we'll see of Teen Titans. I never thought that. I, it, it, they're rebooting Gilmore Girls. Picard is coming back. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. And I was the same way with Brave and the Bold. I was the jerk that was like, oh, look at that Batman. That doesn't look like the Batman that I love. And then you watch it like, this is really good. You know, it's a totally different entity. And, and that's the thing. They can, t they can all exist. And that's what this, this is kind of. You know, it's like, look, there's a universe this exists. There's a universe this exists, and they can kind of coexist in a very fun, funny manner. But that doesn't mean those stories haven't. I don't believe those stories have ended in either verse. You know. Well, the Teen Titans, the, uh, the Teen Titans, they earn the benefits of running around being slaves. Maybe you'll have to find out. That's why you have to purchase it on digital demo. I wish I knew that. <laughs> Yeah. Is there that you to Jeff Mandekow is. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. I was just talking about like 50 DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not for me. I mean, I have one character that I, I, I desperately want to use, and um, and I keep I keep begging them to let me use them, which is uh, Ted Cord Blue Beetle was my thing. And um, I'm still upset they shot him, but he's back. So, but uh, that's always been the one I want to use in everything. And I'll pitch it at like the most inopportune times, you know. It'll be like something, you know, Ted Core, Blue Beetle, they're like, it has nothing to do with it. It's like, yeah, but he's awesome, <laughs> you know. So, so that's for me. Um, like I said, Jeff had a particular vision of what he wanted to do. So, in the Teen Titans verse, you're going to see a lot of things. Are there any deep cuts in the story that maybe um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I mean, even yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I will tell you that my uh, part of the things I contributed was Jeff and I hit upon kind of. I I love to add to the sandbox and add new themes and ideas, and um, I think we did something with. Uh, I had hit upon what a group of Ravens are called and, and added something to the DC universe in that way that I think is going to... I, I wouldn't doubt it show up somewhere else in comics or something. And that's always the exciting thing, right? It's like, oh, I get to add something to the wiki page of DC, you know? So uh, that's more my speed of what I'm doing. Because the deep cut stuff, anymore, I don't know what's a deep cut for who anymore because I've lived with it so long. And, and somebody... We had this... this None of you guys care. But we have this discussion last night, and there were some younger fans. They're like, do you like Kirby? And I was like, do you mean Jack Kirby, or do you mean Kirby <laughs> the... And it became this weird, like, um, it could t you could tell how old you were, uh, because young people were like, I love Kirby when he sucks in things, and no, no, no. The old people were like, what? No, Jack Kirby. And like, it was like this, this weird delineation. So what young people know now, um, you know, we live in a golden age. When I was growing up, I got bullied a lot for liking the stuff, playing D and D, superhero stuff, wizard casts. If you would have told me there was like a show in which there's Hawkman, I'd be like, "You're insane." That was never the case. So, yes, you are tapping out. Okay. Hey, great to meet you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Have